What does cool sound like? When I was watching Across the Spider-Verse, it's like Miles Morales was inside my head about Hobie Brown. I was just cool the whole time. Yes, you were, Hobie. I'm Bianca, I've been an accent coach for a few years, and I'm here to teach you how to sound like the coolest Spider-Man. Hi, right, my name's Obi, Obi Brown. I'm gonna break down that punk accent for you. I've got four specific sounds to demonstrate for you so that you can understand accents and break them down easier. And if this kind of thing is your jam, subscribe for more videos like this one. The London punk accent is the epitome of cool. It's the sound of the s pistols and Susie and the Banshee and the Clash and the Clash. When the punk movement in the UK began, those bands were specifically from the Camden, London area. So it makes sense that our Spider-Punk, Hobie Brown, has that same accent. And not only that, but the actor who voiced Spider-Punk, Daniel Kaluuya, is actually from that area. When they showed me the hard work, they showed me all the stuff, and they said it was from Camden, I'm like, this is literally a dream. Phil and Chris really empowered me to go, I right, listen, do you. I was like, yeah? <laughs> I was like, be careful, bro, because I'll do me and we will understand. He's like, yeah, dude. I was like, all right, cool. And there are so many different areas and accents in London. It is not my specialty. So I called in some help from a friend from LA. I'm Jack Wallace, and I'm a dialect coach here in Hollywood. And Jack's not only a great dialect coach, but he's actually from the UK, so you get to listen to him explaining it in his native accent. Yeah, cheerio! London, baby! And most of the time, part of an actor's job is to put on an accent and take it off, just like a jacket. But for Spider-Verse, it was the opposite. And the thing that jumps out first is how he pronounces his vowels. All vowels depend on three things. Jaw height, tongue position, and lips. And if you change just one of those three things, the vowel variation sounds different. And over time, these variations become what we call accents. And what is it about Spider-Punk's diphthongs that give him away? Hold up! Don't let that word diphthong scare you. It just means two vowels smashed together. In this case, we're talking about the two sounds, ah and e, smashed together, i. My tongue is moving forward as my jaw is closing up from ah to e, i. At least that's how it sounds in my accent. And I'm gonna let Jack explain how Daniel Kaluuya does it in his accent. Ah, uh, e, i. In other parts of London, you might get some rounding at the start of that to more of an ah, uh, ah, uh, i, i. But for Daniel and for lots of people in North London, it gets flattened out and goes the opposite way. So it's much more of an i, i. And so it starts at an ah, uh, and then doesn't travel very far. I. And some words to listen out for in this video are words like spider, vibe, life, and guidance. Now let's hear this in action. Pay attention to your jaw and your tongue as you're shadowing Daniel. What do the fans feel spider punks like? Spider punks like? Spider punks like? So it's really taking it in, taking in that vibe, taking in that vibe, taking in that vibe. Jamie Foxx has just been really like amazing in my life and in my life and in my life and like giving me like guidance, guidance, guidance. The next one is a really famous sound in English that you might want to practice because it's not in most languages. It's all in the name, glottal stop. Glottal stop. You explode the air by stopping your glottis. We call those plosive sounds. But let's get there by starting with another plosive that you probably do have. Say k as in kick or g as in go. You can feel the back of your tongue making contact on that soft part of your palate, the velum. K, g, k, g. So to get to a glottal stop, you need to feel that contact even farther back than a k or a g. Stop the air like you're saying, uh-oh. 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 You might feel a tightening in your throat. You're stopping the air and the sound. Let's practice a few times. Listen to how Daniel says his final T's in this interview. He glottal stops them. But in the first time I met him, I met him, I met him, I was scatting, I was scatting, I was scatting. It's not a problem, is, is it? it? It's not a problem, is, is it? it? It's not a problem, is, is it? it? Did you catch that? Jack's gonna review it for us. One of the things that Daniel does here is he puts in a couple glottal stops to make the fluency strategy easier. Met him instead of met him. Scatting instead of scatting. And not a problem instead of not a problem. Quiz time! Ask me anything. Listen to Hobie introducing himself. And let's see how many glottal stops you can catch and copy. Alright, my name is Obi, Obi Brown. 
I was bitten by. What did you like to know? Yeah, you know I man. Wait, 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 wait. You think I'm gonna show you my secret identity? Come out of it. That is when I'm not staging unpermitted political action slash performing art pieces. I hate labels. I'm not a hero because calling yourself a hero makes you a self apologizing narcissistic autocrat. Come on. How many did you notice? Check the pinned comments and see if you got them all. Also, add another word in the comments below where you think you may have heard a glottal stop, like in the word button, for example. Glottal stops are one of the many free masterclasses you can attend with me. Sign up in the link below. And another feature that Daniel Kaluuya does in his accent is something called an intrusive R. Remember when I said R's vary? They're what we call liquid sounds. Think of R's like water. They can shift from vowels to consonants in their features. And so since R's kind of behave like vowels, we see a lot of variation among accents. And I'm gonna hand this off to my friend Jack too. Every letter R that is written down is not necessarily pronounced with an R on it. Sometimes in some accents you can get what's called an intrusive R, even if it's not written down. So for example, in the word comma, I might say this comma is in the middle of a sentence. We can hear Daniel doing this in the Jimmy Fallon interview when he says, I saw him. Now, initially, if you look at the word saw and him, there are no R's written. The second word doesn't even begin with a vowel. But because he's dropping that H in him to him, then we have the vowel or followed by the vowel I. So to differentiate it, he says, saw him. Maybe you didn't even notice this intrusive R before. Now see if you can say it like Daniel Kaluuya by inserting an R between the word saw and him. Have you, have you ever met him before? I, I saw him on the street. I saw him on the street. I saw him on the street. And if you're really nerding out and you want to go down this rabbit hole with me, I actually did a whole podcast episode with another accent coach friend of mine, Mark Dallas. And now for the most interesting feature. It's called Dark L Vocalization. Again, don't let the word scare you. I'm gonna break it down. Ew, what's that? It's a feature you're gonna hear more in the UK rather than US accents. And we've already seen that R's are liquid. Well, L's are too. They can float between consonants and vowels, and actually in English we have two L sounds. We have the regular L, where the tip of my tongue is touching just behind my teeth on the ridge. L, L, L. And then we have what we call the dark L, where the back of my tongue is making contact. Oh, oh. And then in a Camden accent, those L's move even farther down the vowel spectrum. We call that vocalization or vocalic related to vowel. Where the tongue is much less involved and so it doesn't come all the way up to make contact with the roof of the mouth. So we end up with more of a vowel, so we call it dark L vocalization. So instead of feel, it might become feel, feel. There's some lip rounding that can occur, and some people hear it almost as a W rather mm. than an L as well. So you get feel, feel, instead of feel, but feel. See if you can mimic Daniel Kaluuya saying these three words. What do the fans feel, feel, feel? It's been really like incredible, incredible, incredible. Bills on a pipe, paying bills, bills, bills. <laughs> Spider Punk is a native English speaker, but whose accent is very different from mine. And I have another video for you featuring the Indian Spider Man. Even though he's also a native speaker of English, his accent might be a little bit difficult for you to understand. So check out this video where I break down Indian accents. I'm Accent Coach Bianca, and I'm on a mission to help you understand accents better through movies. See you in the next video.